In this video, we'll talk about cellular adaptation. We'll be talking about situations like hypertrophy, hyperplasia, atrophy, dysplasia, metaplasia, all these things. But before that, let's put things in context. Let's say this cell has undergone injury, so it is under a lot of stress. It would try to adapt to that stress. And all these terms that we talked about are one type of adaptation which would try to revert this injury. Sometimes injury is too tough cell has to either decide whether it can sort of like reverse the injury and become normal or sometimes injury is irreversible and cell has to undergo apoptosis or necrosis. But right now we are going to focus on these kind of like uh, adaptation regimes. First we'll talk about hyperplasia and hypertrophy. So hypertrophy means increase in the size of individual cells but no increase in the cell number. Whereas hyperplasia means increase in number of cells, but no increase in the size. This cartoon shows it very nicely. So in hypertrophy, the trigger is often uh, increased workload or demand. In case of hyperplasia, the trigger is a stimulus that kind of promotes cell division. So now there are more cells into that tissue. Okay, first let's talk about the hyperplasia and then we'll talk about hypertrophy. So hyperplasia could be pathological or physiological. One physiological hyperplasia is the hormonal hyperplasia of the breast during pregnancy. So during pregnancy, hormonal changes happen, estrogen progesterone level oscillates, that lead to hyperplasia of the mammary gland. It prepares the mother to nourish the baby eventually. So how does that happen in molecular level? So first, estrogen is bound to the estrogen receptors that gets into the cell and into the nucleus, estrogen receptors can lead to transcription of many genes associated with cell division and that's how there are more cell that gets added up to the mammary gland and the breast become bigger. There could be um, pathological hyperplasia like endometrial hyperplasia in the uterus where the uterine lining becomes abnormally thick and this happens due to an abnormal balance between the progesterone and estrogen. Often this is found to be the predisposition of uterine cancers. So it is a pathological situation. Now other examples include wound healing where more and more cells are added to that injury site to compensate for the wound. Also there could be compensatory hyperplasia of an entire organ. For example there is a liver injury which often uh, can occur due to some sort of like infection, surgery, etc. But if given enough time, that entire liver can regenerate it uh, with this process. That's amazing. Now let's talk about hypertrophy. Hypertrophy, as you remember, is like increase in the size of the uh, organ or size of the tissue. That means it, there is no increase in the cell number, but increase in size. One of the best example is muscle hypertrophy. All the cells in the muscle are now bigger and they are just larger in size. So overall there is more myofibril uh, synthesis, there are increase in the cellular dimensions. Just like pathological, just, just like uh, hyperplasia, hypertrophy could be pathological or physiological, we'll talk about that. But let's talk about what factors can cause actually hypertrophy. So there could be increased functional demand, stimulation by hormones, induction of growth factors, etc. All these signals boil down to the cell surface receptors. For example, insulin-like growth factor 1 is a key driver for hypertrophy. Other than that, myostatin, androgen, osteocalcin, all of these things can lead to a hypertrophy of a muscle. Also, there could be mechanical signal that is uh, 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 interpreted by integrin-like receptors on the cells. So all these signals boil down to few important physiological and cellular events, that is increased production of the muscle protein, increased myofibril synthesis, that leads to an overall increase in the muscle. Now, there is a massive uh, physiological growth of the uterus during pregnancy and it's a good example uh, of basically enlargement of an entire organ. It's a physiological hypertrophy. So in this case what happens is the estrogen hormone uh, lead to the bigger size of the endometrial cells. Eventually um, the smooth muscles that are present there becomes big. So this is how it can hold the entire fetus during the entire span of pregnancy. Now let's talk about pathological hypertrophy. One of the best examples is left ventricular hypertrophy where the heart becomes maladaptive and uh, the heart 
uh, becomes uh, arrhythmic and sometimes there could be heart failure and death. So why does this happen? Uh, because there is an increased production of cellular protein and the trigger is excessive hemodynamic load. So this all boils down to those cell surface receptor and signaling like IGF-1 and IGFR signaling, adrener adrenergic receptors present in the heart muscle and also mechanosensors that are present in the heart muscle which can sense increased workload. All these things boil down to transcription factors which ultimately produce several contractile proteins, myofibrils, etc. that can make heart wall thicker. So this is an example of a hypertrophy which is pathological. Now let's talk about other aspect. Sometimes what happens is the uh, overall isoforms that are used to contract muscle. For example, the alpha isoform of the myosin is now altered with the beta isoform of the myosin. And this is more energetically economical. So sometimes this kind of change also happens associated with hypertrophy. So this is a quick summary of the hypertrophy. But let's move on to atrophy. So there is a kind of like popular belief that use it or lose it. Atrophy is just like that. So atrophy means like decrease in the tissue mass or size due to less usage. So cytoskeleton degenerates via ubiquitin proteasome pathway or there could be change in autophagy as well. There could be reduced protein synthesis and that could be seen in people who are not using their muscle. So the muscle becomes thinner and uh, basically uh, people call it atrophied muscle. So the causes of atrophy includes disuse, deprivation of blood supply, loss of hormonal stimulation, or sometimes even poor nutrition. So all these things lead to atrophy. Then basically, we talk about metaplasia. Metaplasia is a reversible change where one adult cell type becomes another adult cell type. So let's say this is a squamous epithelium. Suddenly, this squamous epithelium becomes a cuboidal epithelium due to a particular stress or due to some sort of like external cue. This sort of transition is actually known as metaplasia. So there are a few important points regarding metaplasia. It, uh, th this kind of change can occur in response to stimulus or stress. The change happens at the cell shape level. It's kind of like a cell shape transition. And it's kind of like a reversible process. If you take out the stimulus, give it enough time to recover, it can change again. So what is the cause of metaplasia? Chronic irritation, inflammation could be a trigger. So sometimes the body responds to stressors by replacing one cell type with another cell type which is better adapted to that stress. And that's a, basic of, a basis of understanding metaplasia. A real life example is an epithelial metaplasia in the, in the uh, cigarette smoker's lung. So in the lung, there are cuboidal epithelium which gets converted to stratified squamous epithelium due to repetitive uh, smoke exposure. I mean, due to irritation that comes with cigarette smoke. Also, another uh, example is GERD. GERD uh, basically is a kind of like an acid reflux problem where the squamous epithelium gets changed into a columnar epithelia. And this is, this is because by changing this epithelial architecture, the body could uh, handle with the stress better. Okay. Also, intestinal metaplasia happens in the prolonged acid reflux problems where basically esophageal cells becomes more intestine-like just to cope up with the stress. So, I mean, this is also, uh, this kind of situation is also uh, pathological because it uh, it is associated with some sort of like problem. Um Let's talk about uh, other examples. So there are stages of this sort of like met metaplasia because normal esophageal epithelium gets converted into cuboidal one. So it's Barrett esophagus. If GERD or uh, the acid reflux is treated given time for recovery, normal esophageal epithelium would be uh, re reversed because the, this process is reversal. But if it is untreated and repetitive situations are happening, then what would happen is there could be dysplastic or Barrett esophagus and eventually it would lead to adenocarcinoma. So obviously 
these kind of cell uh, uh, tr shape transitions are pretty risky. Sometimes if it is irreversible, it often lead to pathological association like cancer. There are some examples as well because apocrine metaplasia of the breast does not increase the risk of cancer unlike that esophageal scenario. Um, another example of nutrient deficiency induced metaplasia is basically keratomalacia where vitamin A deficiency lead to a hardening and thickening of the uh, mm, so uh, transformation of the thin squamous lining of the conjunctivita into keratinized or hard squamous epithelium. So this kind of transition happens due to uh, malnutrition. There are other examples like connective tissue metaplasia where connective tissue becomes bone like. There are muscular metaplasia where skeletal muscle becomes smooth muscle. So all these transitions have been seen and reported in human uh, diseases. Now let's talk about dysplasia which is not actually an adaptive response because dysplasia happens when things are really really wrong. So basically it's a disorder, disordered and precancerous epithelial cell growth. So this is a normal organization of an epithelia and this is how the uh, dysplastic epithelia look like. So with, there are few cells which are normal but many of the cells have changed their shape and size and it, it becomes totally different. So this is characterized by the loss of uniformity in the cell type in a tissue. So cellular features of dysplasia includes loss of tissue, tissue orientation, nuclear changes, nuclear cytoplasmic ratio changes, clumped chromatin, etc. So often it has different stages. We'll talk about it. So there are normal epithelial organization, low grade dysplasia and here is the high grade dysplasia. In mild to moderate dysplasia, I mean basically this is still a situation which can be improvised but severe dysplasia often becomes irreversible and it can mostly progress to carcinoma development um, basically it's it's a detrimental end stage so in this video in short we learned about all the cellular adaptation process and how cell cope up with stress so i hope this was informative if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up get notes and flashcards in our in instagram page links are provided in the description and uh, don't forget to support our channel. It takes a lot and lot of effort to make these videos. And each of them are authentic, visually pleasing and helping you in your preparation. So please support us and share it with your friends. And see you in the next video.